Hello and welcome. So today I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with uh, gouache. I'm using professional gouache. Uh, this is the Windsor & Newton designer gouache. Really good quality gouache, I can tell you that. Okay, so today what we're going to do is just going to have fun with a little bit of sketching. Just show you like if you go out in the field and you want to sketch something really quick. Uh, I've done some and uh, I actually did, you know, paintings from them. So right here I got a very basic set. As you can see, uh, there's only like one, two, three, four, five, six colors. Uh, five colors plus white. So right now I'm using the CAD yellow. Primary yellow, I'm sorry. It's primary yellow. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about gouache in a second. Um, so you don't get mixed up between acrylic gouache and just gouache. So this, I bought it online, just the primary, primary colors. And with the primary colors, you should be able to do whatever you want with them. Um, so I'm going to be working, this is on 6x9 uh, watercolor paper. And I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, you don't need expensive watercolor paper, especially if you're going out in the field. But I try to get the heaviest weight I can find. And I think I got enough black here. So I got um, primary yellow, uh, primary red, yep, primary blue, and uh, permanent green emerald and that's from Windsor Newton and let me put in the titanium white as well and I got ivory black set all the way in the corner hello from Columbia hey back from Florida we're having nasty weather with this little tropical storm we just had so this is what we're gonna be doing okay I just took a snapshot of this photo um, of this landscape uh, this is like a key this is Key West basically um, on the Florida Keys so I'm going to show you, like, if you're looking at this from, you know, let's say you were wading in the water. Gouache is very light. You could just need very minimal supply. What's nice about gouache as well is that if it dries on your palette, it's fine. No problem. Just take a little spray mist. You could reactivate the paint and use it like watercolor or even opaque, just, you know, like it's supposed to be, you know, gouache. And the other thing is, there's a difference between uh, gouache and acrylic gouache. Gouache, when you paint with the medium, once it dry and you want to paint over it, the bottom layers can reactivate when wet, okay? Acrylic gouache, on the other hand, is acrylic paint, but opaque acrylic paint. Once you lay down the color, once you lay color on top of that, it will not re-wet. Once it's sealed, it's sealed, it's dry, okay? And you could, you know, hang it, do whatever you want, just like you would an acrylic painting. But gouache, on the other hand, there's a special care you gotta take for it. You could use cold wax to seal your paint. If you wanna hang it, use it for whatever archival purposes. Um, so basically that's that. Um, let me show you the palette, uh, or not the palette, but the paper I'm using. All right, 140 pound, six by nine. Okay, it's pretty thick. I prefer it thick so that um, when you paint with the wet medium, you know, paper tend to bend. But this, on the other hand, uh, is less likely to bend, not so much of it. So I made a light sketch with a pencil. All right. So. Let's go for it. Let me wet the paint a little bit more. Miss that. Okay. So the variety of brushes that I have are some cheap ones, some moderately uh, priced ones as well. I got here uh, Black Swan by Creative Mark. Jerry Arderamas runs these. Uh, this is a Mimic watercolor brush, Jerry's Arama as well. 
This is from Michaels. It's a cheap artist loft. Holds a lot of water. Let's see if we could see that better. What? Okay. And it's a couple of other cheap brush. You don't need expensive brush. And what's nice about that is when the paint dries on your brush, you could just wet it and boom, you're good to go. All right, so let me see. Maybe I could put the picture here. All right, so this is what I'm going to be doing one more time for those of you joining me. Okay, Key West. All right, so I'm going to start with my bigger round brush. This is a number 10. All right, let's do this. All right, so first let's start with, I'm going to wet this up a little bit. So that the paint can flow. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of, uh, let's start green, maybe a little bit of black. And this is not my typical palette here because uh, normally I would not use black in my palette. Maybe a little bit of maybe more black because when you mix that black green and yellow you get more of an olive green is what I'm really after okay so I see some dark green right now I'm just teaching you how to just sketch quickly while you're out there in the Sun quick sketch and you see I'm just using the the long edge of my brush I'm almost like at a 15 degrees and just quickly applying the colors and right now I'm, I'm going with the middle value meaning I'm not going too dark right away I'll add the darker darks afterwards uh, let me see so uh, there's some darks here and if you find that your paint is dragging add a little bit of water to your brush it's gonna be helpful and what's nice about you know quick sketches as well you can leave some a little bit of red there Just make some orangey And this is what I would actually do if I was out in the field. I'm leaving some spaces open because I'm gonna put darker colors in there. So you saw me mix that green. I used a little bit of black, a little bit of green, added some yellows, just varying the greens a bit, okay? Now when you put directly yellow and black, you will get more of an olive green. Oh, thank you, Lana. When you get black and yellow, you get more of an olive green. When you use green and black, just get a darker, you know, green, green. It's uh, it's not, it's probably uh, more on a colder side of green versus when you just do yellow and black, which you'll have more of an olive, and especially if you add a little bit of red, you'll get a warmer green. So now, let's go for some of the darker colors are going to come in here uh, so let's go black and you know this is a small set this is just like uh, you know starter set uh, let me see let me while I'm talking at the same time hold on a little bit of red give a little bit of warmth maybe just a little bit of hint of blue uh, maybe more red I want a little bit more warm and uh, let's put a little bit of blue to that okay it looks very dark oh another thing about gouache dark colors will dry lighter lighter colors will dry a little bit darker something to keep in mind so 
here we go some of the dark colors real fast remember you're out in the field right you want to catch that sun you want to catch the colors real quick filling in some of these holes and some will even eventually mix together and if I want to mix some colors together I just added some water to my brush so which will act almost as if watercolor and dapple some of these colors together and almost like you're mixing your oil paint you know you just there you go like that if I want to extend that color a little bit lower just add water you see now I'm adding just like watercolor so there's many different effects that you can do with gouache gouache sounds so bougie a little bit of yellow here and a little darker right there there you go and there's some up here it's okay if i go over some of the things that i've already done because I could go back over it afterwards. Because remember, gouache is an opaque medium. It's a basically opaque watercolor. And see, I just, look at that, right over those darks. You can go right back over it. All right, I'm going to do some, and watch, this is almost dry here, and watch the effects of gouache on when you're painting over already a dark color, watch, you see? It's because it's such an opaque color, you could go over your darks, like, almost right away. And I can make this even darker if I want, the darks that I already have down here. Just going over some of that, like that. And I'm trying to paint quick, 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 quick. Maybe a little bit of white. Some of the highlights, you could go there you go. Alright. Now let's go for the water. The water's more of a brownish olive green. Let me show you that. Okay. So let's make that olive green color. Let me check this out. Yeah, that works. And remember, you can make it like watercolor as thin as you want and then go back over. Actually make it more, whoops. I'm in an odd position. Camera's focused a different way. So as you see there for that olive green, I just used black and yellow. Actually, I could use a little bit more blue to make it a little bit more on a greenish side. And I'm wetting my brush and I'm adding more water, like watercolor. And I see more Lots of green here. Maybe add a little bit of red to that. Okay. Let's 
So basically, it's like taking uh, color notes. So if you ever want to do a large painting when you get home from your trip, wherever you are, it's a good way. Like I've already done one, and I'll show you uh, when this is done. It's probably more yellow, orange, white. Oh, from the Philippines. Como esta canapo? I hope I said it right. All right, I'm gonna add some orange layer here. So right now I'm using almost this gouache like a watercolor. Some red. Right up here. Uh, a little bit more green. Okay. I'm actually going to darken some of this area here. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them while I'm painting. This is supposed to be like a quick sketch just to show you guys how to sketch really fast with gouache. Hey, Lynn. If the gouache dries out, it doesn't matter. You can reactivate it. Like this black right here, I didn't add any more black. I just put uh, water on it and it's reactivated. Now, the only time I would pour out more gouache is if, um, is if I need like thick paint, okay? About the only time when I would use uh, direct all right let me just um, direct paint all right so let me start working on the sky a little bit and then I'm gonna do the water and then we'll work a little bit more. I've been fussing around too much here and talking at the same time. So let's see. Um, ah, no problem. All right, for the sky, and notice I'm still using the same fat brush here. All right, for the sky, let's do the sky. Um, blue, black, make it a nice gray gray color maybe add a little bit of red to that oh that was too much too much Ugh. blue it's okay you could add variety with gouache Yeah, there you go. There you go, some purples with those greens. Now, as you noticed, I'm leaving some parts white because that's where, where most of my pure color is gonna go, okay? And there's going to be some blues around. So let me go with my lightest color. White. Maybe let me just go a hint of yellow. Okay. 
quickly. Bam, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. There you go. Some. I know right now it looks like not much, but it will eventually look with like something. Cover in the sky. And see, I make I can make that purple lighter because I found it to be too dark, almost like watercolor, real fast. I'm almost mixing all these colors together. Maybe a little bit more. You can use your finger, that's allowed. Okay. All right, let me see that last question. If I sketch in the first, then brush on color, will it cover up my drawing? Uh, if you sketch sketch with the brush, yes, uh, I would water down the sketch because you don't need the sketch to be too dark. You know, you just want a quick reference of where you're going to put things, okay? Um, you just want a quick reference. So make it very light, you know, make it like a light gray if you want or look at what are you sketching. If you're going to be sketching trees, then use a light green and yellow to sketch, you know, the, the, the peripheral of the tree and then go on with your dark colors. It will cover it up, yes, if that's what your question is. All right, so try to leave that up here. All right, let's do some of the blue color. Uh, white. Maybe just a little bit of black. So, you see how I'm able to just go over and then just blend in the colors. Now remember what I said, these are color notes, right? You remember that part. So basically, if I was in the keys right now doing this, I'm just taking notes of what works and, you know, if something doesn't work, then, you know, I could always, uh, let me add that blue to this color mix here to mix them together. Uh, these are color notes, like I just said. Sorry to repeat myself here. These are just color notes of what I think might be a decent painting. And what I like about these Winsor Newtons, they're very, very opaque, so you don't have to put too much color. They're really, really nice paints there. There you go, I can shape the sky. Sorry if I haven't answered your question yet. If uh, I will go back and try to read most of the questions there. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of landscape back there. Let's just use some of that black with the uh, blue. Just. 
landscape back there. There you go. Now there's a lot of white. Let me mix this green. Uh, actually, a lot of. Let me see. This is the f water furthest away. And let me add a little bit of. Purplish. Let me see if that works. Uh, might work a little bit. There's actually some. a little bit make it like a grayish okay now I just went light so now we can start working on darker colors here so let me see let's go white we're gonna make like a little light purplish color make sure you get yourself a big tube of white And notice I'm still using that big brush. Now I'm gonna shape things. So you're going over what I already did. And we're going to be introducing more colors, more on the blue side. I see some blue in there. And I'm mixing it in together. So now I know this compared to these, this will have to be a little bit darker. So in a minute there, I'm gonna make it darker. Where is that? There's a reflection from the sky up here. Same up here. That highlight across the water there. All right, now let's start work on these areas here. 
So now I know I'm going to be working to making a dark green. This black is almost dry here, but because my brush is wet, I'm able to pick it up. Maybe a little bit of yellow to that. Don't cover the whole thing, just leave some parts blank. Some dark areas here, some through here, whatever that stuff is in the, in the water. See now, if you're gonna go over another color, you might wanna wait till it's dry so that you don't lift the colors below, okay? So let me see, now I'm gonna work on, there's some specs. So you could go right over what you just did. Let me, reinforce some of this blue here I notice I didn't stick to just one thing I'm like all over the place because when you're out there painting in the field you know the Sun doesn't wait for you to make up your mind as to what colors you want to choose you you pick what you think is you know appropriate right there in that moment and you can always work out the details afterward. Just the main thing is to cover what you got going and take notes of what you have, of what's in front of you. And it's okay if you leave some white spots in between. All right, so let me work on some of these mangrove. Um, I see like an orangey red. a little bit of blue to that maybe just to the blue is only to um, mute that red a little bit I'm using a number one liner here okay so let's start making some of these mangroves Follow the approximate direction of the mangrove shoots.
don't go too light right away. Now remember, your light colors are gonna dry darker. Your darker colors are gonna dry light, lighter. So just make sure you don't forget that. So right now I see the colors drying a little bit darker, so that's fine. My light colors are drying a little bit darker because I'm gonna add some highlights in a few minutes. So that's why I said don't go too light right away. I'm barely okay we're gonna make some of the reflections in the water Just follow the pattern of what you have there. Okay? All right, let me throw some highlights on some of these mangroves. So maybe a little bit of yellow to this color that I have here, a lot of white. Make sure to always look at your subject to see where all the highlights are. Some parts are just catching the sun here. If I had a lot of time, can I do this painting better? Yeah, I can. I'm very confident that I can make this actually into a better gouache painting. But my purpose for using gouache is not to make, well, okay, I'll take it back. I've done one or two that I really like that I would keep as archival paintings. But my main purpose for gouache and the reason why I bought gouache is if it's because it's very portable and if I want to go with my family you know and I don't want to bring the easel and everything else with me gouache is a great alternative for that uh, it's something I could use really fast I could sketch really fast what I see and go home and make a painting out of it okay so I could take that and really make a painting out of it and I will if you have time I'll try and show you what I did for uh, I had a request for a painting and I went up with gouache first to design the painting and then Uh, went on and did the master painting and the client was very happy so there you go <clears throat> excuse me follow the form okay all right so let's put some highlights here and there uh, I haven't added highlights um, let's put let's use a fatter brush let's use this one here let's put a little bit of blue yellow some white make some clean colors make it a little bit lighter because you know it's going to darken I'm using the wide angle of my brush 
and I'm letting the texture of the paper do the rest. Some highlights here. And you don't have to be, uh, you could change your subject around the way you want it. You know, you don't have to be like exact. And right now you see me, I'm not using too much water at all, if any. I'm using a little bit more blue, just for some of the shadow leaves area. And the reason I'm not using water is I want the texture from uh, the paper to show up. Just like that. Actually, let me just go forward and boom. All right. Uh, let me add some lighter color in the water here. from the sky. I'll try and read some of your questions in a minute. Uh, I'm sorry if I, if I haven't gotten to you. It's not because I'm ignoring you. It's, uh, it's hard to talk and paint at the same time. Hey, welcome, Cheryl. All okay. right. Uh, I want some darker. greens here. adding more white in the clouds and more texture, visual texture. Let's throw a bird in there somewhere. Let's do like a little egret. Um, ooh, let me see. Would you frame this like you would watercolor with matte and glass? Okay, yes, because this is actual gouache, there's some, if you don't want to use it on, you could do it with glass, yes. Typically you would do it with glass because of humidity and whatnot could ruin the painting eventually with time but there's another way out of this you could buy look online it's, it's called cold wax for uh, watercolor paintings so it's this 
this wax that you put all over your painting, which will seal it from any of the outside elements, okay? And then you could put it, you know, in a frame without the glass, okay? And there's some people that actually go a little bit further. They, um, they put the wax in, I believe they actually put spray on, uh, retouch varnish over it. And uh, if you varnish it, it will make the colors a tad bit darker than what you initially started with, okay? So just keep that in mind. There is a way to do it. So cold wax is number one, adding cold wax to this. And the colors will actually stand out even a little bit more. It's almost like putting varnish on an oil painting. Same deal, really. So uh, no secret. And then, um, yeah, you can do that. All right, so that's the way you would do that, Susie. All right, let me try and do this bird right here. Quick little simple egret here. Uh, let's see this bad boy's fishing. I don't want to do it here. Let me just do it right here somewhere. His shadow. Just like that. Put some, uh, you know what? Let me wet that a little bit. There you go. Now it looks more like a shadow. Let's do the underbelly. There you go. Let's do some legs. A little bit of red, a little bit of black. There you go, let's give him some eyes. Let's put another one. Let's put another one. Let's put one right here, just. Whoop. Take a. I was, uh, when you're, you gotta be careful when you're if your brush is too wet, you will have these big blobs of water, uh, of paint. Just got to be careful. Luckily, this is a sketch. Yeah, it's just... I could work with that. go give him a little underbelly I'm just having fun with this let's throw another bird somewhere flying out here there you go want to put a sailboat back there let's put a sailboat 
Whoops. Put a sailboat. Well, that didn't show up very well, did it? Do a bunch of sails. There you go. All right. Ha <laughs> ha. What do you think? I hope I didn't take too, too long. Um, so there you go. I mean, that's gouache for you. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments for me and, uh, and I will answer them uh, as soon as I can. So remember, gouache is rewettable versus acrylic gouache, two different things. And uh, it's great to take out. I mean, really all I need, I could put my paints in here just take this book, this little easel, and a few brushes, go anywhere and just like, you know, hold it in my hand and you paint. I did it once before to see how easy it was. It's actually pretty easy. Now you can have a whole setup. Um, you have this great artist I really admire, this is James Gurney. I'm sure some of you might have heard of him. He does beautiful gouache paintings, but although his paintings are more like detailed, you know, uh, paintings that he does, me, my purpose is more for sketching, color notes. Do I like the painting? Do I like what I see in front of me? Uh, I could do this, you know, three times and change it around the way I want it to be, you know. Uh, I could change, do a different kind of clouds. And sometimes if you're in the hotel room, wherever you are, you just took a picture of some place and you could sit there in front of a light and just, you know, all you need is water and three different uh, material items with you. And that's it. And then you... Uh, could start sketching so I hope this was like useful useful for you put my name here There you go. You never know, I might die and this sketch might be worth a lot to somebody. <laughs> Just kidding. Anywho, so I hope you liked it and uh, this will be posted and you could watch it as much as you want. And if you have any questions, just ask and uh, I'll be more than happy to help you. Okay? Thank you guys very much. I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy time with family. And uh, thank you again always for your support. With that, I say good night, people.